Join me right now on Kumite TV is rising UFC featherweight prospect Steven Peterson. What's going on, Steven? Uh, just got home from the gym. You know, I'm grinding, man. Uh, just under two weeks out, so uh, I'm ready to go. Just can't wait till uh, showtime. Speaking of grinding, your whole team is grinding. Last weekend, UFC Wichita, your teammate Alex Morono, he TKO'd Zach Otto. Thoughts on the performance and the run that Fortis MMA has been having lately? Man, Alex went out there and just impeccable uh, job. He went out there and dominated. Um, yeah, the team's on a roll, um, but it's no it's no surprise to us. We've been working for a long time. We've been, uh, you know, uh, we we expect wins. We expect domination, and uh, it's just the way we train. We train really hard. Uh, We've been uh, grinding for ever since we opened, ever since Fortis MMA opened. Uh, our goal was to have 10 guys in the UFC. We did that. Our goal this year is to have all of us ranked. And uh, one by one, we're all accomplishing that goal. So uh, that's my goal next. It seems like you guys have a family-oriented team. You know, it, you guys support each other. You can see it on social media. What is the environment like at the gym every day? Man, it's... Uh, well, yeah, yeah. So, so we're outside of practice. We're like a family, but uh, that comes from the hard work we put in together. Um, when you sweat together and bleed together and uh, just grind day after day, um, you have a different level of respect for each other um, than than your average person. Because most people w won't put themselves through what we put ourselves through. So, um, yeah. So we're really close um, and support uh, support's necessary. Um, there's tons of haters out there, tons of people trying to bring us down. So uh, us as a team, we need to build each other up. On a side note, how good is Darren Williams? <laughs> D-Will's pretty good, man. Uh, he's been training for about three three years now, two, three years now. And, uh, yeah, he's getting really good, honestly. Now, I was looking at your, you know, your career, and you spent a lot of time at Bantamweight, and you moved up to Featherweight to you know in your debut for the UFC but most guys they drop a weight class when they go to the UFC what's the differences do you see in yourself at featherweight I've been bouncing back and forth my whole career um my my pro debut was at at bantamweight and then my next fight a month later was at featherweight uh, my next fight a, a month later after that was at lightweight so I was kind of just feeling out the different weight classes how I felt in each one I've always felt good at featherweight um, at Bantamweight, I was very dominant, but I started making that weight class when I was 18 years old. Um, 10 years later, I'm 28 now. Uh, it's much harder to make that weight. And uh, just year after year, it got harder and harder. And the last couple of years, you know, uh, we felt like I had to get into the UFC at Bantamweight because the featherweight division was so stacked, it would be harder to get in. Um, but it just got so hard, and it just wasn't healthy anymore for me to keep weight, making that weight. So we talked to Sean Shelby, and we said, uh, you know, we'd like to to go in at featherweight. And he said, if you think you can uh, hang with the featherweights, then uh, go for it. And, you know, I feel like I, I fit in just fine at featherweight. Yeah, man, it's a blessing, man. Most guys, they have to drop all that weight for you. You don't have to do it anymore. 2017, 2018 has was a roller coaster period in your career. A lot of highs, a lot of lows. Where did you grow mostly throughout that time? Yeah, so uh, you know, I had a lot, a lot of wins, good wins, good losses. Um, in 2017, from July of 2017 to July of 2018, uh, I had five fights. Um, I had three absolute wars and two dominations um those dominations were at 145 and uh you know i felt really comfortable at that weight class and uh you know i, I learned a lot from those losses and i i just learned uh i needed to really just focus on being strong at featherweight and uh and i've done that over the past year i've really just uh you know put a lot of muscle on my frame and uh so I'm really stacked at featherweight, and I just I don't plan on going back down to band weight. Um, it, it was definitely a roller coaster. It was like I was chasing a carrot on a stick. Like the UFC, it was like uh, I was so close to getting there. Um, even before I fought Leandro Higo, um, 
for the LFA one belt, it was uh, it was like if I wouldn't have taken that fight, I was right on the cusp of going to the UFC. And when I lost that fight, it was like, man, am I ever going to really get there? So, um, you know, I just sucked it up, kept grinding, um, got a couple more wins. Then I went on Dana White's Contender Series and lost a split decision. I was like, man, I was like so close to getting it. And uh, Sean and Dana told me, he said, go get another win and then we'll pick you up. They said they liked the way I fight. And uh, that Dana White Contender Series fight, it was like I, I almost wasn't able to fight as smart as I would have liked to fight. Because you got to go out and press it. You got to go forward. You got to put on a show. So I had to come forward the whole time. Ended up uh, running into a, a couple of knees that I, I might not have ate uh, if it wasn't on that stage. But I, I just had to keep coming forward. So, uh, you know, and then that was another setback. I went and got my win. And then they picked me up. So, uh, yeah, it was awesome. I'm just happy to be in the UFC and uh, ready to make my run for the title for the top 10. Yeah, it seems like you went through a lot of toughening up mentally because of those losses and the wins, you know, going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Well, my mind has always been my number one asset uh, as a fighter. Um, even at the beginning of my career when I really wasn't that good, uh, my mind, uh, just my mentality got me uh, through tough times and, and, and to win, um, win in tough fights, tough positions. Um, so I just went back to that just went back to, uh, you know, being a mental giant and uh, overcoming adversity. That's, you know, that's what makes me. And, uh, yeah, definitely just re remembering who I am as, as a person, as a fighter. Now you're one and one in the UFC. Coming up next is a fight with Luis Pena at UFC Nashville. He's a Tough 27 alumni. Are you a fan of the Ultimate Fighter? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I feel like they don't really have the best talent on the show, um, but they have some personalities. Uh, when I was young, I wanted to go on the show, and then after I, ha I got a lot of experience, I was like, man, I'd like to get in the UFC without having to spend a month or six weeks in the Ultimate Fighter house. Um, but they do build you up. They, uh, they build up your personality, your fan base, people get to know you. Like Luis Pena, he really hasn't done much in the sport. Um, he's only five and one, hasn't gotten any titles or anything like that, but, uh, he's a fan favorite at this point. A lot of people know who he is because of the show. So, uh, it's great for, for building a, a good fan base, but I feel like, uh, Dana White's contender series is a much better platform for, uh, bringing in high level talent and, uh, just, uh, building contenders, you know, future champions. I also think that because he looks like Bob Ross has a big part in what oh, people yeah. remember about him, right? Right, yeah. It makes him definitely uh, really memorable. Uh, they call him Violent Bob Ross. So, His last fight was at UFC Denver. He lost. He lost for the first time as a professional to Mike Trezano. What did you think about his performance? Uh, I thought he looked pretty sloppy, honestly, in, uh, in all areas of the game. Um, he wasn't. He was outstruck in that fight. Um, he was shooting sloppy for takedowns. Uh, if he shows up like that in this fight, he's going to get hurt. N no doubt about it. Uh, and I feel like uh, that really played a toll toll on him mentally. Um, why Why would you go down a weight class when you're already so skinny and, and tall at 155? So I feel like uh, he's making a big mistake in dropping down to to featherweight. Um, he was already, you know, super skinny, and uh, I think he's just going to be super frail at 145. Yeah, you mentioned that he is dropping down the featherweight. You know a lot about dropping down. How big of a difference does 10 pounds make, you know, like on your chin, physically, mentally? I never really noticed a difference on my chin. Um, I've never been, like, I have one knockout loss, but I've never been knocked out, never been knocked unconscious. Um and I've always been able to take a hell of a shot, whether it's been at 35, 45, 55, whatever weight class I fight at. So I never really noticed a, a difference there. Um, just the size difference. He's uh, he's definitely going to be much taller, uh, much longer than me. So uh, that's where he does have a little bit of an advantage. Another thing that I noticed is that you're so much more experienced than Pena. 
You know, mm-hmm. I think you have three times as many fights. Do you believe that this will play a big fights, factor yeah. in the fight? Definitely, definitely. Um, you know, I've, I've been there, done that. Um, he did do the Ultimate Fighter, which gave him some some good experience. But, uh, you know, I was uh, XKO champ here in Texas, um, legacy champ, uh, which is a world title. Uh, I've accomplished a lot of things in my career, and he really hasn't accomplished anything in his career. So when I go out there, I'm going to show that experience. The longer the fight goes on, um, that experience is going to show through, no doubt. There's a huge height and reach difference between you two. Do you see holes in these so-called advantages? Oh, I see tons of holes. Um, without going too much in, into how I'm going to exploit them, um, I think he he's uh, banking on the fact that since he's going to be bigger, that's, that's going to play a, a role in this fight. But... I think it's going to play an adverse role. He's going to, the weight cut's really going to hurt him. Um, he's not going to be able to go three rounds. Uh, I, don't, I don't see it making that out of the first. From past performances in the UFC, what separates you from Pena as a competitor? Uh, as far as the UFC goes, um, I fought a way high le- higher level of competition um, throughout my whole career, honestly. Uh, his UFC debut, he fought a guy who was 3-0. and um, Last guy was the Ultimate Fighter winner, so I'll give him some credit for that. But the guy was, what, 7-1 and or 7-0 seven, seven or something like that. So um, not that many fights. Uh, I've fought guys with 16-1 uh, and records, um, you know, and, and everybody i fought has had a winning record. I've never fought a guy with a losing record. So uh, that, that will uh, definitely play a role in this fight. One last thing before I let you go, you know, fighters, they're always, they always got their headphones on, you know, people always wonder, like, what are they listening to? What is, what gets them hyped? What gets them hyped in training? What gets them hyped to fight? What is your, you know, what's on your list? What's on your playlist? I love listening to Eminem. Eminem. I grew up listening to him. Um, Later in life, uh, I got into uh, Five Finger Death Punch um, and, uh, you know, other rock, uh, hard rock, just that uh, old school rap and uh, L.A. rap and then uh, some, some rock. L.A. rap, you're originally from California. Who are some oh, artists yeah. that you could recommend to your listeners? Uh, 50 Cent, Ice Cube. Uh, yeah, just the L.A. greats. March 23rd, UFC on ESPN Plus 6, Nashville, Tennessee. Steven, thank you for your time and good luck to you. Yeah, I appreciate it, brother. Thanks for having me on.